We're doing this art channel to share the joy of looking at art, which can be historical or contemporary, paintings, sculptures, or even photography. We choose a different theme for each month, and in this episode, we will look at another Japanese painting. We would like to hear from you, so join us or leave a message if you like what we do. So we're looking at a painting by Sesson Shuke today, aren't we, Matthew? Yes, we are. Um, yes, so again, we're looking at um, Japanese um, work this week. And um, it was quite interesting. He based both of his, um, both, well, his paintings are both based on um, two artists, particularly one called Shubun and one called Seishu. Um, who both worked in ink, and um, he kind of combined both those styles to um, to make his own kind of um, amalgamation of their work. And he may, uh, he was a Zen monk, like quite a number of these painters we've been looking at recently. And um, like most most of these Zen monks, they like painting animals and trees and mountains. And um, well, actually, is there anything else I, I forgot to mention? There's a few more, but I want to hear what you think as well. Well, there are a few disputes about when was actually Sesson born in those days. Mm -hmm. So there were two times and it's actually almost like 50 years apart. So one was like 1504 and then, or he was born in 1492. But even though it was like 50 years apart, it was still during in the Muromachi period. Um, so that's the medieval Japan and that's the warring period in Japan at that time. So it was a very chaotic and violent period mm. in Japan. But the thing is, even though it was a violent period, the economy and culture actually flourished because there were a lot of movements of people. And networks and transportation and commerce and trade benefits from it which is quite interesting mm -hmm. yeah um, um around that time period um there was a few western influences um like a low christianity and the introduction of firearms and at the time there was uh, quite a lot of disputes as to um where the um where the country should head you know? mm. And um, so at the time, there was quite a few civil wars, and it lasted for at least over 100 years. Um, and, go ahead. and it was dominated by different clans, right? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was quite an interesting period. And Japan was actually closed for a very long time, except for opening up and trading with China. It didn't open up to uh, Westerners, uh, mm. like Portuguese until until like the Edo period. Mm -hmm. So what do we know about Zen? Because you mentioned that Sesson was a Zen monk. Yes. Um, so essentially, like with some of um, the artists we've talked about, um, he was a Zen monk. He was also into painting. And uh, generally, um, when you'd enter a, a temple, there would be quite a number of paintings and sculptures. And I like to believe that um, these paintings were a way to kind of counterattack, you know, to, uh, to counteract um, the way Japan was at the time. You know, there was just uh, infighting and um, there's a lot of uh, disease and the like. And mm -hmm. um, usually during those times, people would turn to religion or spirituality. That's true. Yes. Um, so what what is Zen like? Zen is, I think Zen is consists of stillness, right, and insights, and appreciating the essence and nature, mm -hmm. and all living beings. Mm. So they they but however like Zen, at the time they embraced by the military class, so most of the um, the military class they will have Zen monks as their advisors, which is quite interesting and contradictory to the beliefs ah mm, yes um i suppose they just needed any sort of leadership at the time because of how things were going mm. and um 
it led up to the warring states period the war and uh, the warring period where um there's a way more fighting between um provinces and the like and like you said there was all these uh clans around japan mm -hmm. and they were all kind of vying to rule the entirety of japan and um I, I, I said this before we started, but generally, um, they liked, um, I don't know why, but Japan really likes this time period. So they made uh, games and TV dramas about that time period. Um, even when I was in Japan, there's just so much um, Sengoku, um, Warring States stories that were just mm -hmm. everywhere. And yeah, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> You are usually very interested in this kind of warring period, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the, the Chinese, um, they have this... Um, romance of the Free Kingdoms. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like, these are the warring period, too. Yeah. Divided into different kingdoms. and. Yes. Mm -mm. That's where the drama is, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and Sesson painted mainly landscape paintings. Yes. But uh, um, the, mm. the, the, the one we are looking at today is the Tiger and Dragon screen. Yes which is quite interesting because it looks like it is not really really relevant to what he used to paint but actually it really reflects the the period of time mm. uh, another painting to look at one day um is one um one called landscape of the four seasons it's apparently right. quite on one of his famous work but uh today we'll just discuss the tiger and dragon screens um yeah do we know where this painting is right now? No idea. I just it just came up a few times when I was uh, researching. And, oh, no. um, Tiger and Dragon Screen. Oh right, it is here. in the National Gallery of Art um, in Washington, um, right. Art Institute of Chicago, and the Miho Museum. Wait, did, which one? The Tiger and Dragon Screen? Apparently, well, not this particular one. I just mean his work in general. Oh, okay. Yes. I was just asking but as for this particular this, one, I was I'm, asking about this particular one. Where is this painting? I'm not is quite. Right now? There's a, in the Cleveland Museum. I can believe that. Yeah. And so we're going, we're looking at the tiger right now, aren't we? Uh, yes, yes. So we'll start on the left this time. Um, with the painting. So. Yeah. Well, are we, are we do we have like a, an image of the whole painting because then we can see what it what it consists of dragon and the tiger you know the way thing is i couldn't find one that's just two of them together oh really yeah but anyways we have the tiger and dragon and it's the well they represent two opposing forces of nature yes. yin and yang so yin and yang is basically like masculine and feminine and the sun and the moon and um in japan the tiger represents the wind and the dragon represents rain water clouds so we'll look at the tiger first mm, yes so um so just a brief description um so we have a tiger on top of something like a mountain um among um bamboo um stems and mm. with a waterfall in the in the background um the tiger itself um in looks quite um Maybe the wrong word, but cartoonish. So it's not a realistic depiction of a tiger. It's uh, it has um, very big eyes, kind of a round face, quite uh, quite cute actually. And it's a dubious look, as if like it gives a side glance. Mm -hmm. And then, as you said, like a cartoonish, like comical look. Mm -hmm. And as if it's like ring. Mm. Ah, I'm like thinking, what is it thinking? Like dubious look, like mm, mm, probably mm. glancing at the dragon. Mm. And it's interesting that we have, we can see like the bamboo behind it. Mm. So bamboo, you know, it's very slim, but it's very resilient actually. Mm, mm, mm. You can see the wind blowing it in, and and then it's like swaying, but you know, not breaking at all. Yes, yes. Um, I thought that's a pretty good uh, choice for the um the art. That usually bamboos are just very just straight up, but uh, you can tell there's actually very strong wind just by the uh, the bent bamboo and such, and mm. uh, you can see very light tones of um, gray in the um, in the painting itself. 
to kind of show um, wind. Yeah, and it shows the direction of the wind too, right? Yeah, yes. And and the bamboo leaves like blowing towards the the, the tiger, mm-hmm. and it, as if like the tiger is summoning the wind. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard to quite tell what the tiger is thinking just by the expression. It could be mm-hmm. afraid. It could be um, curious. Curious. It could be um, even angry. I don't know. It's uh, maybe just up to the interpretation of the uh, the viewer. It looks like it has a little hunch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like some secret, you know, there in there. Yeah. And I like that it um, says not includes a waterfall. So because he was very good at uh, painting landscape, and you can see his skillful um, painting, like ink brush paint, ink ink brush works in this one here, with mm-hmm. the waterfalls and the rocks. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, there's a, a lot more darker colors on the, the land itself um, mm. to draw more attention to it. It's, yeah, it's very yeah. detailed. Mm. Shall we look at the dragon? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, depicted here is a, um, a dragon, but it's, um, it's quite intangible. So you can't quite make out the dragon completely. So you can see parts of it, like the head, and parts of its uh, body. You can mm-hmm. make out two of its hands. Uh, oh, three, actually. You can make out three. Uh, two hands and uh, one foot. And you have these um, jagged waves at the bottom, and these swirls of um, ink in the background to, to, um, to show the strong wind. And I like that you can see the train of scales of the, of the dragon like hiding behind the clouds mm. and but at the same time it is if it's, it's falling from the sky or, or struggling in the sky i was thinking that too um it doesn't look uh, composed it might just be just appearing or falling it's um yeah it doesn't look like it's in control right mm, mm, and mm. but in the face of the dragon it almost looks like an elderly person yes doesn't I don't know why well, I've never seen a dragon or if there's any dragons in the world, but this looks resembled an old man. Mm-hmm. And but we can see how powerful the dragon is or the wind yes. that is summoned with mm-hmm. this swirl in the um, right hand right hand corner. Mm-hmm. And then the the waves are like fingers actually, like juggling the the dragon. Oh, that's true. That's very true. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's um, it's hard to tell. Um, it could be afraid. It could be confused or angry. Um, and um, you kind of see the. I don't know if you can see it, but you can kind of see these um stringy things around the dragon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like whiskers or. I I suspect it might be lightning. Because oh. you have these whiskers here already on its face. Right. Yeah. But um, these little things, I imagine, have to be uh, lightning of some sort. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's during that period, like, painters usually mm. really like to um, paint, you know, like, part of them concealed, like, with dragons concealed in the clouds. Mm-hmm. Or in waterfalls, mm-hmm. so it gives this a mysterious kind of um, well, it is a mysterious creature because people, you know, we we don't really know if it exists or not, and people fantasize about dragons since since the old days. Mm-hmm. That's very true. Um, it is interesting, though. Um, I suppose the fact that this dragon has a human face might mean something deeper. Oh. Yes. Um, so, if we um, look at both the uh, the dragon and the tiger, the tiger is um, most likely just glancing at the dragon, but um, you can maybe see it as that the tiger is curious about the dragon's uh, sudden um, appearance. Right. Or you could be curious to see what the dragon will do. You could maybe... You could maybe look at it and see it as um, the way people were at the time, 
where they were seeing all these um, civil wars and such happening. And mm. like you said earlier, the dragon looks kind of um, not composed. And maybe that's what people felt like the civil war was like. Was that um, it was people, yeah, people just didn't know what they were doing. They just felt like, oh, let's, uh, I want to take over this part of Japan. So I want to, I don't know, start a war here or something. Um, it was just chaos. It was just people um, not knowing exactly what they were doing. You know, mm-hmm. everyone wants power and wants a piece of something. Right? Yes, exactly. Um, but I don't know. What What do you think? That That's just my interpretation. But um, yeah, I guess it, it is, as you said, it really reflects the time, um, the chaotic period during the, the, the warring state. Mm. And perhaps that's what. But somehow, like, um, Sesson might want to find peace or balance through this because the dragon and the target represents yin and yang, right? Mm. And then there's wind and rain. And it's just the whole cycle of nature. So inside there might be this longing that there will be peace and, and balance restored. Mm. And mm. that's. Mm. I can see yeah. that. Mm. Mm. It is quite fascinating that it has a human face and um, it would have been just easy to kind of use your typical long uh, nose to dragon, but um, it's, and you said earlier, it's an old person. So, yeah, yeah. It, I, I feel like it does kind of lead to the theory that it could just represent the old people that were, you know, trying to run the country by, you know, taking territories and the like. Mm. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this image is considered a, a positive or negative, or even just kind of a like um, oh, my memory's gone bad. But you know, you have a lot of these newspapers with uh, caricatures of uh, politicians, and um, you know, and it's uh, it's always a kind of a it's a parody based on the uh, the politicians and usually what's happening at that time period you could kind of see this painting as as such but maybe i'm looking too deep into it but um yeah and um it's also a good balance of light and and darkness and Mm -hmm. the tiger looking quite calm or playful or curious and a dragon looking um disjointed and um ethereal and um powerful yeah, it is a light and dark contrast, mm. but it is a light-hearted piece. Like considering the darkness, mm-hmm. at a time. Yeah. yeah. Um... But there are a lot, a lot of different dragons, like throughout the period, that has more power in it. The the painters will always. Um, painted the dragon as a powerful creature yes like rising from the sky or rising from the uh, through the clouds or from the waterfall mm. which this one is a little bit um disengaged with well mm. what we see like dragons should be like somehow mm. yeah and then anything that you want to add or well um, I made a few comparisons with um, last week's piece, so we could uh, look at that. And if we think yeah. of any more, we can um, we can mention that too. Let's look at the comparison then. Okay. So uh, last week we looked at the the whale and elephant screens, and um, we noted that um, you know you have the whale that's um, in the sea, so it represents the sea, and then you have the elephant that represents the land just being by the shore and then mm-hmm. you have the tiger that's on top of the mountains with the bamboo and mm-hmm. then you have the dragon which is in the sky so it kind of goes from like the, the very bottom to the very top mm-hmm. and um probably not intentional but um it's a it's also a it's also a zen um painting and um 
I don't know. I thought it was a very good um, gradual kind of story. It was unintentional, but I thought that was quite interesting. Um, so I suppose it's also just a very Zen mentality. And in each of these paintings, the two creatures are kind of like conversing with each other That's somehow. True. That's true. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Um, well, you can see the parallels. Like it's it's a light painting, and both of the artists are into like religion, like Zen and Buddhism. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And they, they they try to find peace or convey um, a message of peace through their works. Mm -hmm. I can I can believe that. Um, thinking about it though, it's does the dragon. Um, what do you think a dragon represents? Because um, I have quite, I had some notes earlier about it, but it's uh, really up to interpretation. Because when you look at um, Dracuchu's uh, screens, um, both the whale and the whale on the elephant are quite majestic looking. You mm. know, they they're not um, they're not uh, there isn't any. Um, it's just calm. It's. Um, just two large creatures just uh, maybe conversing or just looking at each other or acknowledging each other and um, I can't tell if the dragon even acknowledges the tiger you know um, and again there could be a political underline of a political idea about maybe the dragon not really acknowledging like the dragon being like the politicians not really acknowledging the people but mm -hmm. I don't know it might be a stretch but um, yeah I don't know and I also just think that the um, the uh, station um, screens are just a bit more chaotic I guess because of the strong winds in both of the screens whilst mm. the um, Jakutu is very calm Um. But they're both still Zen images, I suppose. Just maybe one is more calmer than the other because it's got a lighter colors and um, just kind of a soft kind of um, image in general. Whilst mm -hmm. one of them is more, there's more, um, yeah, chaos. There's more chaos going on, I suppose. But well, there, there are like, there's like this chaotic presence in this in the in peace i guess yes yes and that that shows in the session painting whereas well jokchu lived in the rather peaceful time mm. and um started trading with westerners so there it's a lot of wealth in that period in the Edo period and you know, even an exotic animal like the elephant, you know, he he saw it when he was young. Mm -hmm. So that that shows like how op the openness uh, during that period, uh -huh. and and a lot of opportunities too. Mm -hmm. That's true. I guess that reflects it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I that makes sense actually. Yeah, I can understand that. Mm. Mm. Um, did you um, is there something we missed well I guess that's about it from me I mean yes it conveys a message of peace in a chaotic period of time mm -hmm. for the Cessnon painting mm -hmm. and it's very rare that he painted a uh, tiger and dragon and mm. usually he paint he painted it like a landscape painting, Cessnon. I noticed so, that too. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very nice painting, I think. Yeah. Um, as usual I, I tend to ask what's your favorite um part of the the painting? The favorite part of it? Yeah. I, think I really like the the tiger actually. Mm. I like the tiger as his uh dubious, mischievous kind of look. Yeah. And a side yeah. weight glance. Mm, me too. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, I don't know if it's intentionally cute, but it's it's very cute. 
I think. And so the tiger is your favorite part of this painting as well. Yeah, yeah, it's quite cute. Yeah, mm. very contrasting with the the dragon. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Mm. Oh yeah. Um. I tried to find the significance between the tiger and the dragon, and um, so far, all I could really find about it was just um, strength. They both represent strength, really. Mm. Yeah, and it's apparently from a Chinese ideology, from what I found out, um, which makes sense because um, generally. The dragons we see in a lot of these um, Japanese paintings are based on the Chinese depiction of dragons. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, I imagine just dragons in general, the mythology just maybe originated from China in a, in for Japan, at least. Yeah, the mythology, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, they've always been kind of a um, two sides of the same coin. Because um, the term, um, when I looked it up, the term tiger and dragon came up a lot. Just as a kind of, they kind of represent a sort of yin and yang, I suppose. Um, as for why particularly, I just could only find out that they were both, they're both strong creatures, I mm. suppose. Yeah, but in a way, so is the whale and elephant. So, yeah. Except, I guess, those two are gentle giants. But, uh, yeah. Um, well, is there anything you want to add for this painting? Um, no, I think that's everything, at least. Yeah, well, I, guess I guess that's it for today, then. All right. Um, thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed today's discussion. If you, if you would like to catch up with our previous streams, you can check out our YouTube channel under the same name. Uh, catch us ne next week at the same time, same place. And see you next time. And see you next week. Bye-bye.